Hey guys, it's Jessie V. I'm back. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas or whatever it is that you celebrate. As you can see, I took a four day break, which is crazy. I don't think I've ever done that in probably like three years, but it was actually really nice to take a little bit of a pause. I love this channel with my whole life, but it was nice to take a pause. So you probably saw the title of today's video and thought, really Jessie? Rock, paper, scissors? And yes, I thought that today we would continue our series talking about retro and vintage children's games that have a dark side to them. Because yes, rock, paper, scissors has been around for a very, very long time and I know we all have played this game. But before we get started, today is Boxing Day and that means for the next two days we have a huge, huge sale on our merch website. Every single item on there is discounted and this is probably the lowest prices they're gonna be in the next few months. So if you saw something you liked, definitely go check it out. We have so many awesome plushies. We have a bunch of sweaters. Literally, we have unicorn pajamas now. There are so many cool things on there, so I will link it down below. And also, I have a huge sale over on my Etsy store. So if you liked any of my necklaces or bracelets or earrings, they are also on sale. These are going to be the lowest prices they'll probably ever be. And if you would like any of those, go check out the Instagram account called The Whimsy Wonders. All the links are there. But yeah, end of announcements. I promise. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about some rock, paper, scissors history. This game originated in China, and it's a hand game usually played with two people. So you both have to form one out of three different shapes with your outstretched hand. Rock is in a fist, paper is a flat hand, and scissors is two fingers spread apart. You guys know this. You guys know this, right? And I'm also sure you guys know the outcome of this game. Rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. A lot of people play this game to settle something or to determine who goes first for something. It's definitely a game of chance, but if you know the person that you're playing with very, very well, you might be able to guess what they're gonna choose. Do you guys wanna play a game with me right now through the screen? Comment down below if I won or if you won. And you have to be honest, okay? Are you ready? We're gonna play literally through the screen right now. I feel like Dora or something interacting with my audience through the screen. Okay, are you ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Did I win? Did you choose a rock or a scissors? The first ever mention of this game in history was in the 1600s. So like I said, people have been playing this game for a very, very long time, which I'm not really surprised about because it's literally just a game you play with your hands. You don't need any game pieces for it, so you can play it wherever you go. You can go up to strangers and be like, wanna play rock, paper, scissors? All we need is our hands. Now, in my research, I found out that rock is the most played of all time. So when people play this game, they usually choose rock. Did you choose rock? And actually, scissors is the least played move. All right, so now that you know about the history, let's get into the creepypasta. There's a creepypasta talking about how you should never play rock, paper, scissors with your reflection in the mirror. And if you do, you better hope that your reflection keeps playing the same thing that you do. So for example, if you you play this game in front of your reflection and you end up choosing rock, you better hope your reflection chooses the same thing. Or if you choose paper, you want your reflection to also choose paper. Obviously, it's your reflection. It's supposed to do the same thing you do. But it says that if your reflection suddenly chooses a different option and wins, it will attack you with whatever it chose. So for example, it says this one time this person was playing this game with their reflection and their reflection ended up choosing scissors and the person had chose paper. So the reflection literally came out of the mirror to try to attack this person with scissors. So if that happens, you better run away because your reflection's gonna make a paper snowflake out of you, if you know what I mean. This creepypasta really freaks me out because reflections have always freaked me out in general. And I just think playing a game with my reflection would drive me crazy. But I am thinking of trying this on my vlog channel because you know me, I am crazy. The rules say for better results to play this in dim light with a candle, which would definitely be even spookier to do. So maybe I'll try it in the daytime and then at nighttime. Listen guys, this just goes to show you to never underestimate your reflection. All right, let's move on to our next game that has been played for hundreds of years and this is skipping stones. I know you've tried this once in your life as well. Stone skipping refers to the art of throwing a flat stone across the water in such a way that it bounces off the surface. The objective of skipping is to see how many times a stone can bounce across the water before it sinks. So people will usually have competitions 
is to see who can go farther. And I know whenever I went to like a lake or a beach with my dad, he would always try and do this. And he was actually pretty good at it. Since 1997, competitors from all over the world have taken part in the World Stone Skimming Championships. I did not know they had literal championships for stone skipping. You learn something new every day. And according to the Guinness World Records, the most rock skips that anyone has ever done is 88 in a row. And this was done by a man named Kurt Steiner. 88 skips, guys. That's insane. I think the most I've ever skipped in my life was probably two. And that happened like once or twice. Comment down below how many rock skippings you've ever done. Maybe we can find the V team champion. But you have to be honest, okay? All right, so let's get into this rock skipping creepypasta. This is a story from the 70s about a little boy that had a family cottage in the woods. Now, they had quite a few ponds and lakes surrounding this cottage, but there was one particular body of water that was completely off limits. It was fairly small and murky. The water was so dark, it would be impossible to see the bottom or any wildlife swimming in there. And his parents had always told him to stay away from it because of the countless children that had drowned in the water over the years. They said it had a strange type of seaweed that grabbed onto legs and didn't let go. And this one particular day, the boy's parents had told him to go out and look for firewood. He walked around the cottage but couldn't find any good pieces. So he walked farther and farther until he got to the forbidden water. Now, the water was so still that it looked like glass. It almost looked like no one had disturbed it for decades. And because it was so peaceful, he had the urge to throw something into it. Why do I relate to this boy so much? <laughs> this is something I would do. So he picked up some stones and began throwing them onto the dark surface of the water. Then again and again and again to see how many stones he could skip in a row. When he was tired, he picked up some firewood and began to walk back to the cottage. But after only a few steps, he heard rustling in the water behind him. And when he turned around, he saw multiple figures emerging from its depths. In each place he had thrown a stone into the water, there was a head literally coming out of the surface. He counted about 30 tiny figures. All of their faces were covered in their soaking wet hair, and their skin looked gray and bloated. Why did he ever disturb the water, he thought as he ran back to his cottage. He told his parents what happened and they locked themselves inside, hiding under the staircase out of view from any windows. And the last thing they saw was a large puddle of water emerging from underneath their front door. And that's how it ended, so I guess the creepy water people were after them. Not sure what happened to them in the end, but I can assume it wasn't good. Anyways guys, those are the two vintage games we're gonna be talking about today. There are so many other ones I can talk about, so if you want me to continue this series, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget, if you would like to check out either my Etsy store or my merch store for the Boxing Day sales, definitely go and do so. And I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!